Only eight more groups of contestants have a chance to impress you at home and win a spot in the Miss World Final 40. I'm Frankie Chenna, and we're here at the Sky Lounge at the Phoenix Island Resort, and this is the Miss World Head to Head Challenge. Today, I'm joined by Malta, Nigeria, Slovakia, Tunisia, Liberia, and New Zealand. Ladies, how are you feeling this morning? Fine, thank you. Very good. Have you had your morning coffee? Yes. yes. <laughs> that okay. was so early because we had to prepare for the challenge. <laughs> That's all right. Coffee or not, it's time to begin the head-to-head -head challenge. Remember, voting is now open, and here's how the competition works. Each contestant has prepared an opening presentation, then we'll catch up with Barney to learn more about the competition, and then it's the final question. Let's meet our first contestant. She comes from Malta. Ni hao China, and hello to everyone from all over the world. My name is Michaela Galia, I am 20 years old, and I come from the magical island of Malta. I was born and raised in a quiet and peaceful village in the northern part of the island. The village that helped me become one with nature and the village that influenced my love for strawberries, the village of Mjar. The traditional strawberry feast which takes place every April is probably what instilled this. As a little girl, my favorite activity in the whole world was to sit in our music room and watch my father and grandfather singing and playing instruments and being amazed at how happy it made us all feel. 18 years later, I have developed a strong passion for singing, theater and music. And I'm currently in my final year at the University of Malta, reading for a bachelor's degree in theater studies. I feel blessed to be part of such a special family, as Miss World allows you to combine your love for beauty with your love for helping others through the incredible project of Beauty with a Purpose. And I am proudly representing the Maltese Islands at this year's Miss World 2017. Malta, you are such an amazing singer. Where does your talent come from? Uh, I always had a passion for music and will always have a passion for music. My father, he's a professional musician and a singer. My auntie, she's a singer, my grandma is a singer, my grandfather is a professional musician and a singer, and my great-grandfather was one of the most well-known musicians in Malta, and my dad's cousins are also musicians, so it kind of runs in the family. And I feel so blessed and grateful to be sharing our love for music with each other. The fact that we're all family and the fact that we can share our love for music with each other is just something, it's, it's, such, an, it's such an amazing feeling. Thank you, Malta. Thank you. Our second contestant is Nigeria. Hello everyone, I am Iheze Ugochi, a 21-year-old final year student studying fine and applied arts and I'll be representing Nigeria at the Miss World Beauty Pageant. I am from Imo State, the eastern heartland of Nigeria. I love painting and writing, I also love playing board games and kayaking. I also work as a model, I love modeling. Modeling gave me the confidence and the exposure to contest for the most beautiful girl in Nigeria. Contesting for the most beautiful girl in Nigeria has taught me a lot of things and winning the crown has changed my life. I love my country, Nigeria. Nigeria is a beautiful place filled with diverse cultures and amazing people. I am proud to be a Nigerian and I hope and I intend to make Nigeria and my family proud. How do you see Nigerian culture reflected in the textiles that you work with? Um, it's well known that Nigeria is an ethnically diverse country. We have over 250 cult, um, ethnic groups and each of these ethnic groups have fabrics, motifs, patterns, even colors that are unique to them. And in my work I try to bring all this together because in Nigeria we have this saying, unity in diversity and I try as much as possible to portray this in my work by picking motifs and colors from different tribes and different ethnic groups in Nigeria and putting them together to create one masterpiece. Thank you. Thank you, Nigeria. Our next contestant is Slovakia. My name is Hanka Zavodna and I am Miss World Slovakia. I am 22 years old and I live in Bratislava, capital city of Slovakia. Slovakia is a little country in the heart of Europe. Although its area is small, it offers its inhabitants and visitors plenty of things to see. 
I came from a big family and that's why I think I am a very positive and happy person. I have one younger brother who I have great relationship with. He introduced me to sport called Taekwondo. Taekwondo is Korean martial art which I like to practice to give my body strength but also to relax my mind. Although I enjoy modeling, I decided I want to follow my biggest passion and start studying at College of Education. My dream is to have my own kindergarten one day as I really love working with children. Additionally, I enjoy spending time with animals. I have four small dogs, three budgies and two rabbits. I like walking outside with my dogs, it helps me clear my mind. But the most I love cooking and baking for other people to make them happy. I am very happy and proud to represent Slovakia on Miss World 2017 this year. I am excited to see all contestants from all around the world. Thank you for your support and I am sending love from Slovakia. See you all in China. What lesson would you teach to your future students? I think teaching is not only about teaching from books. More important is to show children the right direction in their life. And I will show them when uh, they work hard, they will have success one day. And when you are a teacher, you have the opportunity to show them that they really matter. And it's a teacher's job to uh, find the talents of children and to help develop them. Thank you, Slovakia. After the break, we meet our next three contestants. Welcome back to the Head to Head Challenge. Our next contestant comes from Tunisia. Hello, my name is Emna Abdelhedi. I come from Tunisia, a country in North Africa. It's rich with 7,000 BC and is the first olive oil producer in the world. I'm 21 years old. I'm a student at the Higher Institute of Fine Arts of Spax and majoring in plastic arts. In my free time, I enjoy dancing, listening to music, drawing, and being active in civil society. I have always loved to help children, especially those who live in underprivileged areas. For this reason, I started together with a very passionate and motivated team my own project of restoring old schools and decorating them with bright colors. Offering by that a places where children can study far from the winter's rain and summer's hot sun. I'm honored to represent my country, Tunisia, in Miss World of 2017. I'm very passionate about this experience. Tunisia, tell us more about the Bright Color project. So my project is uh, restoring old schools and decorating them. So uh, I chose the bright colors because I think that bright colors is uh, the things uh, attract uh, people and when uh, children, uh, the people in the school see that colors uh, right, uh, like uh, the red, uh, the pink, green, they feel happy and uh, they take uh, the positive vibes and energy. <laughs> Thank you, Tunisia. Thank you. Our fifth contestant comes from Liberia. Hello world, I'm Woki Dolo representing Liberia, the oldest republic in Africa. I earn a Bachelor of Arts degree in Peace and Development Studies. I am a philanthropist, a model, and social media influencer. During my spare time, I enjoy mentoring children, making new friends, and cooking delicious meals. My goal is to expand my foundation, that is the education for transforming adolescent girls throughout Africa and the world. My journey to Miss World started in 2007, when I lost my first pageant and used my defeat as a motivation, which enabled me to become Miss Cottington University 2012. And in 2017, I contested as Miss Liberia and became victorious. Participating in Miss World is a dream come true and I aim of bringing a crown to Liberia. My proudest moment was the night I was crowned as Miss Liberia, which makes me to believe that nothing is impossible once you put your mind on it. I have always held onto a motto that says, if your dream don't scare you, they are not big enough. What did you learn from your bachelor degree in peace and development studies? Uh, thank you for that brilliant question, which indeed I'm passionate about. All I could remember during my childhood days, well, being a refugee, migrating from one country to another, 
because of the 14 years of civil crisis in my country, that led to thousands of people being killed and losing of properties. So my bachelor degree in peace and development studies had helped me to examine the causes and prevention of conflict. And without knowing the causes of conflict and implementing peace, I would not have participated in this war 20, you know, 2017 because it's because of the person of peace that my country has been able to send me in to represent them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liberia. Our final contestant of Group 13 is New Zealand. Hi everyone, my name is Annie. My name is Annie Evans. I'm representing New Zealand this year. I'm 20 years old and I was born right here in the heart of Auckland. Although I've lived here for most of my life, when I was 14, my mother started a company in China. So I moved up with her and started to explore the other half of my roots. Since coming back to New Zealand, I've truly learned to appreciate the beautiful, picturesque scene that we call home. I really, really love going outdoors to hike and swim and just be outside in the sunshine. Here in New Zealand, unfortunately, we have the worst youth suicide statistics in the world. I thought long and hard about how I wanted to help this community of people, and I thought the best way was to give them hope for the future through education. That's why I'm starting up my own foundation to help people with scholarship money for university so they can study without the financial burden. Do you think speaking Chinese has given you an advantage in the competition so far? Oh, definitely, 100%. I felt like when me and the girls went to different sightseeing places, I was able to give a more in-depth kind of understanding of where we were going and the culture that was behind these beautiful places we were going. For example, we went to a lighthouse and um, it was very, very beautiful um, aesthetically, but I felt like through talking to the locals and talking to our tour guide, I was able to tell the girls about how it was shaped like a Chinese spirit glass and the fact that it was skinny in the middle and it came up on the top was a sign of royalty and kind of a blessing to the lighthouse. Um, I also found this in New Zealand as well during my reign. I felt like me being able to speak Chinese, I was able to connect two different groups of people and bring them together. I mean, personally, my mum's Chinese, so I know a lot of Chinese people who have come to New Zealand and really, really want to help this country that has kind of welcomed them with open arms. And through that, I've kind of educated them about my Beauty with a Purpose project, which is helping the teen suicide in New Zealand. And I felt like in New Zealand, I've just brought kind of a lot of people together and made a New Zealand a better place. Thank you, New Zealand, and congratulations, ladies. Remember, you at home get to decide which of these contestants deserves a spot in the Miss World Final 40, and there are three ways to vote. Liking the contestants' official Miss World Facebook page, voting for them on the Miss World website, or following and voting for them on their official Mobstar accounts. The contestant with the most increase in votes, likes, and follows after this episode will advance directly to the Miss World Final 40. After the break, we learn about one of Sanya's most sacred spots, the Nanshan Temple.
welcome back. Barney and the contestants took some time for peace and prayer at the Nanshan Temple. Let's take a look. We visited the historical Nanshan Temple. Nanshan citizens are famous for their longevity and great health. I'm joined by Miss Nepal. Miss Nepal, could you tell me a little bit about the incense? Yes, the incense stick, they are known to be made from flowers, herbs and other natural sources. In Buddhist, um, burning incense stick is known to be a sacred offering to Lord Buddha. The aroma of incense stick is believed to develop a pure mind and pure soul, reveal the pure self uh, away from all the negativity. Once you make your wish, you then burn your incense and hopefully Buddha will then grant it. The key feature of the park is the bronze statue of the Guanling Buddha. The ladies are now showing their gratitude to the Buddha and they're doing that by praying at the Buddha's feet. This Buddha is one of the largest Buddha statues in the world and there are three sides to it. One that represents mercy, one that represents wisdom and one that represents peace. So you can go to each side and start your prayer depending on what side you are that represents each one. What I found quite interesting was that the local people believe that if you come and stay at the temple for a while, you actually have good luck. Oh, well that sounds perfect and I hope that brings you all the best of luck in the final. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Nansa is a lucky place. So people living here more than 90 years old is popular. So many people more than 100 years old. And what's that down to? How do they get to live so long? Oh, good weather, good food and practice and good attitude. A school of trainee Shaolin monks dazzled our contestants with a display of martial arts. The temple was built in 1988 to commemorate 2,000 years of Buddhism in China. This place is absolutely beautiful. The ladies are just in awe of the beauty. We've had such a peaceful and tranquil day here today at Nam Shang Temple. Myself and the ladies have learnt so much about Buddhism, good karma and Chinese culture. Welcome Barney. Thanks Frankie. How was Nan Shan Temple? Nan Shan Temple was so cool. I mean, it was actually breathtaking. That Buddha, the Guanling Buddha, you could see it from every single point in Nan Shan. It, so wherever you stood in Nan Shan, you look up into the sky and the first thing you see is the Buddha. Mm. And it was kind of, it was almost like the Buddha's watching over Nan Shan and like gracing it with health and prosperity. Um, one of the interesting things was at one of the temples that we went to, like one of the actual smaller temples, mm -hmm. uh, it was so beautiful inside. There was the golden Buddha statue and um, all of the art and paintings. It was, it was like gorgeous. It was absolutely stunning. And um, one of our cameraman, Marcus, he was like, oh my gosh, I need to, I need to get this. I need to get this. And, um, he kind of stood up on the threshold to, to, to try and take a, to try and record a bit of the mm -hmm. thing. And it was almost a throwback to what Miss New Zealand taught me um, uh, back at Shitty Village. Because mm -hmm. she said, you know, you can't, you can't stand on the threshold no matter what you do. And so as soon as Marcus got up and stood on the threshold, uh, Jackie, our tour guide, he ran over and was like, no, no, you can't do that. You can't stand on there. Mm -hmm. Don't let someone see you standing on there. So it was like, wow. I mean, I just thought it was bad luck but to stand on the threshold, but it's actually something that they really, really like honor and respect and take seriously. Um, another thing that I loved about the place was, you know, the, the massive Buddha statue, the Guanyin mm -hmm. Buddha. Actually, the base of the Buddha was full of these scrolls and they were all like around the, the walls in, encased in glass. And I was walking through and I said to Jackie, I said, what, what are these scrolls? What do, what do they mean? And he said, these are all wishes. These are wishes to the Buddha, like hundreds of years old wishes that mm -hmm. people have written and they've been encased in glass and kept there um, so that hopefully it, the Buddha grants the wishes. And um, I thought, wow, that's almost like, that's beautiful in a way because it represents the past, the present mm. and hopes for the future as well, which I think is what Nan Chang Temple really stood for. Amazing. So when are you going to start teaching a Chinese history class? <laughs> I mean, I know enough now, right? You've learned so much, all, yeah. of, these, all of these tours. Uh, well, you'll keep learning for the future episodes. Oh. And after the break, the contestants will answer the final question.
Welcome back. It's time for the final question. Now, each of our contestants were given the question before the show. I'll read the question one more time, and you'll each have 30 seconds to answer. And today's question comes from a fan on Twitter. Best of luck. Choose one issue you would want to resolve first, climate change or poverty. New Zealand. I strongly believe that climate change is the first problem we should resolve. Climate change is often the result of lifting people out of poverty, and it can also cause more poverty through natural disasters, disease, crop failure. So it's definitely something that we would need to look in first. I feel like lifting people out of poverty, as I said before, is often at the expense of the environment. And um, this can be seen in industrial countries or in special manufacturing countries. And this is because when people are poor, they need to use the environment. That's the only thing they have. And I feel like what we need to do as industrial people who have benefited from using the environment, we need to help those in need by helping them develop sustainable ways of using the environment, but also not causing more climate change to happen, which won't benefit them in the long run. Thank you, New Zealand. Liberia. I will resolve climate change because uh, climate change is widely affecting the world we live in. And as Mother Earth, we need to implement policies for young people and the older generation to know our action that affects the world we live in, and as well as Mother Earth, because that's the only precious stone we'd have. Without the Earth, there will be no existence of him one. Thank you. Thank you, Liberia. Tunisia. I chose uh, poverty because uh, Miss World is beauty with purpose and uh, I want to do humanity project and help others, especially the people uh, who live in underprivileged areas. Great. Thank you, Tunisia. Thank you. Slovakia. Thank you for the question. I will choose poverty because it uh, directly affects people, affect people and uh, I think everybody should uh, have the same conditions, like a place to live, clothes and food. Thank you. Thank you, Slovakia. Nigeria. I would choose climate change because most of the natural disasters that occur nowadays in our environment is because of climate change. And it's because of we do not take care of our environment and this affects the climate change and therefore causing these disasters. And these disasters also lead to poverty. So if we are able to tackle the problem of climate change, I feel that poverty would be reduced or maybe even eradicated because most of, for example, in my country, there were floodings because um, the ocean was overflooded and there were floodings and people lost their homes, people lost their businesses, people lost their lives. And then that led to poverty and there was a, like a recession in my country. So I believe that if we fight climate change, we were able to fight poverty as well. And people will be able to have better lives and live well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Nigeria. Okay. Malta. I would choose poverty um, because we hear of a lot of countries and people who, who do not have enough food and enough clothing and enough shelter. So it, it just makes you feel helpless. And it just makes you feel like you want to help them. So we have to all come together, just create an, an organization within, within the community and be able to help those in need. It just makes you feel it's, it's something that you, you are giving, but you're receiving so much back. It, it, it's just something that, it's just something, such an amazing feeling that you can give and receive back. You, ha you receive more than you're, you're giving, kind of. Thank you. Thank you, Malta. Congratulations, everyone. You Thank did you. it. You get to enjoy the beautiful sun of Sanya now. It is. Do you feel relieved? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were all excellent, very poised. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Remember, you get to decide which of these contestants earn, earns a spot in the Miss World Final 40. The winner will be announced in a future episode. And you can stay up to date all things Miss World by following us on our social media platforms, the Miss World website, MissWorld.com, and the official Miss World accounts on Facebook, Instagram, Mobstar, Twitter, and YouTube. We'll see you next episode with our contestants from Venezuela, Rwanda, Montenegro, Sweden, Seychelles, and Poland. Vote in our head-to-head -head challenge to have your favorite contestant advance to the final 40. There are three ways to vote. Visit the Miss World website, on Mobstar using their official Mobstar account, or by liking their official Miss World Facebook page. The contestant with the most increase in votes, likes, and follows will advance directly to the final 40.